tips for trying to date as a bodybuilder? How can steroids affect the sex drive and libido? How do you find balance? How long have you guys been? We were just talking about it earlier. I was like, we've been together close for to six years. Five She's like, years. we've been together five years. I was like, it's been five and a half years. It's been a long time. Long time. I'm getting old. Old. Bruh. Emotional damage. Yeah. 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 No, not together. She had already done a national show. She did Junior USA it's the same year that I did nationals. This is 2016. You did the same year as me, right? Mm -hmm. Right around the time of 2016 nationals, I was actually rolled out the live feed feature on Instagram. I was at the grocery store after nationals, and the only thing that I had in my cart was chicken and rice. I can't make it up. I looked in the cart and I got really depressed. I go, oh my gosh. I was like, I can't even think of anything to eat. So I went on my live feed. I was like, all right, guys, I need ideas of something bad to eat. <laughs> and Caroline's like, cookie brownies. Picked it up, never made it, but she slid into my DM after that live feed. I think it was within 24 hours or 48 hours or so. She's like, hey, I forgot to send you the recipe. She was hitting on me for like a month. I didn't know she was hitting on me because I just don't pick up on stuff like that. She even asked for my number and I still didn't think she was hitting on me. Her interest. I was following you back and I knew something was different about her like she was very conservative and you could tell accomplished in her own way So it, she stood out to me. I woke up from my birthday went out with my boy went out with some friends I was bouncing at the bars at the time which I bounced throughout college and I still had a corporate job I was working at coca-cola at the time and I just bounced for some side cash drank for free got completely sloshed woke up the next day extremely hungover <laughs> And I opened up my phone and I had a text message from her. It was a video. Clicked to play the video one time. And it's like her blowing me a kiss, right? Like happy birthday and like blows me a kiss. And I'm like so hammered still, probably still drunk, that I can't conceptually grasp what was going on. Wait a minute. Who are you? And I had to replay like five times. <laughs> I was like, wow. That really means a lot. She's interested in me. Like I finally picked up that she was interested in me. And then after that point, I kind of just dropped everything and uh, we jumped on a FaceTime. Two weeks later, I flew up to Ohio and I officially asked her to be my girlfriend. What did you know you loved me though? Almost like right off the rip. Like it was just something different. So as a female, I think when I first got in the fitness industry, I really wanted someone who just had the same drive and passion for fitness. However, I would not pigeonhole yourself to having to date someone who actively competes because you will see a lot of narcissistic, selfish people, especially males that are selfish and narcissistic because that's why they do the sport. It becomes their outlet to make themselves feel like a god. Everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a god. And so my biggest piece of advice when it comes to that is, number one, I always tell my girlfriends, I'm like, you need to figure out what are the three to five things you absolutely need from your partner. These are things that you have to have. It might be something as simple as you need them to be able to listen to you when you have a stressful day. But it might be as detailed as, you have a child and you need someone who can support you and your child while you're in that relationship. The three to five things that are unquestionable pieces, these are usually related to your values. So you need to figure out those. I never wanted to date someone that was a bodybuilder per se. I just want someone that's healthy, that can support my lifestyle. In all honesty, you have to know your own flaws too going into a relationship. I know I needed a caretaker because I do not take care of myself. Obviously I take care of my health, like I can cook my own food and stuff like that and I can bodybuild and take care of my fitness and that, that piece of it and that's where I focus. But just as something as simple as like lotion or little things like that. But it does really add up when it's you're looking for a relationship and being able to support someone within bodybuilding, I will say having someone that has done at least one show in a relationship it does make a big difference to support you doing a show. And I think that this is the question that people are asking. If someone has never competed, the reason why I put out my content or my quote unquote black post as you see me going through prep and to tell you the mental processing that goes through or the hardships that people go through is people that have never been through a prep can't understand it. Having someone in a relationship that can understand that and can support you 
is huge. It, it is a piece that I thought that I didn't need and really dating Caroline in the beginning, not married, was a huge piece for me and a huge piece to my success within bodybuilding. Now, was it going to make or break my bodybuilding career? Absolutely not. Would I have been as successful? Absolutely not. You don't need someone that is actively competing. It sometimes creates turmoil when two people are competing. A family does not understand how the sport and eating. Oh, that's a good one. If your family is new to the sport, the biggest thing I can recommend is communicating what your process is going to be like, but also what you need from them. Because I remember my first year competing, all people wanted to do was tell me I was too skinny and they wanted to feed me. And I get that because there's a lot of eating disorders, especially in the sport, that women get. One thing that helped me a lot was kind of vocalizing to my family, I know you love me, I know you care about me, I know you're concerned about me. However, this is a short-term goal for me and this is what I'm doing. So I would appreciate it if when I visit, you have room in the fridge, I can bring my own food. Or you can bring, you can have chicken and vegetables and rice and whatever food you need in your prep. If you're visiting family, be like, hey, can you have these at this event so that I can eat the meal with you? You want everyone to gather together around the food, but it's technically not around the food. It's around the people. So if you can find a way to communicate that with your family, it makes a huge, huge difference. But also communicating that you know after show, you still are maintaining this lifestyle. One thing that I have seen families do really well actually together is making it a cohesive effort. So if we're talking one family unit, make it a group effort, a team effort, work together to accomplish a goal. One, your kids are probably gonna get like hooked and they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, my dad or mom, she looked amazing on stage. It doesn't matter if you win or lose, but they did amazing on stage. Next thing you know, they're actually getting into fitness. They want to stay healthy. They want to be a piece of that lifestyle. And then the other thing that I want to talk about that probably no one talks about is finding the right coach that understands you and that you have a family. If your coach doesn't understand family and relationships, they're probably not gonna be like, hey, if you need to have a family night with your family and you need to have more calories for that meal, subtract X amount of calories out of this meal, add it into this meal so you can sit down and have date night or family night. I think that's extremely important. And John Meadows really nailed this one home where he would save some calories in his week just to have a date night once a week with his wife. And it's extremely important. It's not so much about the training as it is about building our relationship. And to me, the better our relationship is, the happier I'll be, the harder I can train. So it's a little bit more about not just what's, going, what's happening in the gym, but it's actually what's happening with our relationship. I did want to add something on communication though. There is a threshold though on what to communicate versus what to keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I learned this, he's learned this, especially Mr. Blunt here. If anyone knows David, he speaks his mind and he'll speak his mind right when it comes to him. And what have we learned from that? Keep speaking. No, we have learned that sometimes you have to be very mindful and tactical when you're speaking, especially when you are dieted down super, super hard. There are certain things I cannot talk to you about because you That's literally correct. have no energy, no mental capacity to care about it, to want to hear me. Do not vent to your partner when they're in prep. They do not want to hear it. And also, if you are in prep, do not vent to your family because what does that say to them? It says, this is a miserable experience. They should never do this again. So all that they're going to keep telling you in the future is that you should never bodybuild because you literally only told them complaints. You just need to sit your manic ass down and be quiet for five Minutes. Is it okay to plan a trip post show? Don't want to rebound, but want to enjoy time with people. Yes, I am a big advocate of taking post show trips, <laughs> celebrating life. We've done this, we've gone on vacations post show. After my first show, I went to Europe for 10 days and didn't gain weight that whole trip. I was eating moderately. But when it comes to this whole life balance that we're talking about, if you want to plan a trip to celebrate, 
do it. If you wanna go on vacation because you literally haven't been able to go on vacation because you're in prep, great time to do it. You won't necessarily rebound if you control yourself. You don't have to train the whole week either. Some coaches have different reverse dieting plans. David's different with all of his clients as far as how to reverse. For me, coming out of a show and in a relationship, I wanna bring my energy back to focusing on my life outside of the stage. I'll just use us as an example. After Junior USA's 2019, that was the second hardest prep I ever went through. I can walk actually to my office about three months after that show. I literally peaked three months out where I couldn't function anymore. The plan was missent. The plan was literally missent to me and I was eating half the amount of calories I was supposed to in a week for a month and a half by that point. After that show, two weeks later, three weeks later, yeah, so, so we planned a vacation and I asked her to marry me and obviously the rest was history. Aww. Rebalancing that life immediately after the show is so important, especially in a family, especially with a relationship because these people, okay. these people, your family thinks it's, it's a selfish sport so it almost looks greedy and they want you back. They want your energy back. They want to see you being happy and to be together. So plan a trip, go on a vacation together, do something where it's an active vacation too. Go on family hikes, ride a bike at Hilton Head or a beach, walk on the beach, whatever. Do something active and eat intuitively. You don't have to follow a strict plan immediately after the show. If you overeat and you overeat foods that your body is not used to, you're setting yourself up to get a gut oh, issue yeah. and both of us can speak to that because I've gone ham post show after one show I literally had I can't even tell you how many slices of pizza a burger and fries my homemade baked goods and I had something else all within like a four-hour period of time and then I, I, did the same. I had issues talking steroids affect the sex drive and libido. so from a female perspective it will increase it especially in the early parts of your prep if you've never enhanced before that's something to be aware of and mindful of is that you might be horny and you are gonna have to figure out if you and your partner are prepping together especially is that something that's even doable at that point in time monitoring yourself and your energy getting more in touch with your sexual energy is super important not just during a prep but any time of the year which is something he and i have talked a lot about in our relationship is how can we support each other when one of us is more interested than the other, especially when you're starting to diet down and maybe you literally don't have any interest in sexual activity. With men, it will increase, obviously, when you in increase it. There are certain steroids that come into play that can negatively impact sex drive drastically and it completely crush it, in fact. <laughs> Another thing that comes into play is aromatizer inhibitors. If you end up crushing your estrogen profile, forget about it. Your libido will be gone. Absolutely obliterated, does not exist. You literally have no more genitalia that even exists. You're gonna be like, am I even peeing right now? You will probably have a minor increase in the beginning, especially since your stack will probably be a little bit different. As you get deeper into prep, you probably, when the other drugs get implemented, you may have some libido issues come into play from that. There are ways to combat that, don't get me wrong, for sure. And I talk about those in my other videos and we have some other videos coming for erectile dysfunction or anything like that. I personally do not get erectile dysfunction at all. I've never had an issue with it. But what I can tell you is things like penis sensitivity definitely reduces down and that yes directly has to do with a drug in particular and then taking it a step further when your energy is zapped I'm four and a half weeks out I might as well be a Ken doll I will get random and I'll just be transparent with you guys I'll get random erections throughout the day just like a brand like boom, like five seconds wow that's really annoying it's like a wind blows in you get an erection it's like all right cool like we're gonna be a male and it just like gone all of a sudden. And it doesn't mean that like I have like high libido or anything like that. It's just more of like an annoying thing because I know I don't have the energy to put forth an effort because when you're in a sexual relationship or having intercourse or sex or making love, you want to make sure that you can give that energy back to the person. And if you don't have the energy to give, it's actually an empty void is how it feels. There's not very much matter in there. There's not much energy in there. And we call these voids. So that's another reason why I don't really care for having 
sex deep in prep is I can't get the energy and the tension that I would need and there's just a lot of things that come into play. Make sure you communicate it with your partner because she might start to perceive it as he's not interested in me anymore. He's on Instagram all the time and he's liking these other girl athletes who are competing and they're lean. Is there something wrong with me? I don't have that issue anymore, but a few years ago I did and I was literally thinking that he wasn't interested in me because he didn't compliment me. He didn't look at my body. We weren't actively having sex and I was just like, what's going on? The male needs to communicate that to the female because that can cause turmoil in the relationship too if you aren't communicating that, hey babe, I just don't feel good today. I literally can think of a day, it was like three weeks ago, and I like sent him a text message about how I was thinking about him, and I walk in into the room, and I try to make a move on him, and he's like, babe, I love you, but not right now. And so I just had to walk away, not take it personally, but just recognize where you were, and know like, this is a short-term sacrifice. How do two alphas work together? Utilize the strong points. Being in uh, an alpha relationship, two different alphas together, one, you kind of need to be with an alpha or one person walks over the other, that's one big issue. But then again, you have to be careful not to step on the other person or else they will fight back, right? Like, now we don't fight, but you get what I mean. Like, like there is turmoil that would get created from it or strife is maybe the right word. Two hard-headed people. Two hard-headed people. So for instance, I didn't want Caroline in any of my business of any sort because I've seen how business and relationships completely ruin people, uh, friends and relationship ruin friendships. So finding ways to understand other people has been the tried and true. It doesn't matter if it's a relationship, everything's a relationship in your life that you have those interactions. To take her strong points and take my strong points, combine them together makes us better. It's not an overnight thing. It takes years and years and years and years. And we're still not 100% there. Like we never will be, but we know enough about each other. Taking strong points and combining them together is huge, but you have to find out a way to cohesively come together as a one unit. And that also works within the family unit as well as coming together as parents. A piece of Dave and I's relationship that we had to learn the most from was we developed an actual unhealthy piece of codependency mm -hmm. where he didn't verbalize, but he expected me to make his meals for certain things. Or I would expect him to lead in the bedroom. And there were certain things where we weren't fully ourselves and we started to, you know, as you're with someone for a longer period of time, you become very similar and more like them in certain ways. But one of the most important things David emphasized was me to be myself and to not lose myself. Through that, my, my leadership has come out but also my femininity has come out. Having a different type of an alpha energy to be able to share in this relationship has made us the strongest we've ever been. And that has been through self-actualization, self-awareness development. Having a focus on yourself and a willingness to accept that you still can grow and you aren't, this is who I am, this is how I'm always gonna be, but you should be willing to emerge into your best version of yourself. Mm. At one point in my life, I didn't believe that there was balance. I was eat, sleep, breathe, bodybuilder. I want to turn IFBB pro, eating meals around the clock. I have to train a certain way. I have to walk the certain walk, talk the certain talk. The more that I did that, the more one dimensional I became. And that was part of my journey where I literally didn't know who I was. From my personal experience, balance comes from that self-realization and self-awareness and having other interests beyond bodybuilding. I'm gonna just leave it at this. If you would have asked me three years ago about my fitness goals, I would have answered, well, I'm a bodybuilder. Now, if you ask me about my fitness goals, I respond, I enjoy bodybuilding, but I'm focused on being my strongest, healthiest self. And so for me now, it's not that bodybuilder is my noun. Bodybuilding is my verb. The number one thing I focus on, especially with my professional athletes and athletes that are coming up, is creating better lives for my athletes. I want to help them build careers. I want to help them build strong relationships. I want to help them build everything else besides their physique, because their physique is going to come as their life becomes better. Continue to build your life, and that is a structural, fundamental piece to everything. If you are broke, you cannot bodybuild. If you're having to worry about if you can put food in the fridge, 
you're not going to be able to bodybuild. Focus on those fundamental pieces to balance your life and you will be successful. My pros, I am building careers. I am building bank accounts so that they don't have to stress when they go into a prep. Bank accounts don't matter. What does matter is the safety that you have behind it. So you don't have to stress. If you have daily stresses because your other lives are in shambles, why are you going to focus on stepping on a stage that's going to be 0.01% of your entire life? Oh God, no cap. You're going to just lose everything to step on a stage, throw on a tan and get a plastic trophy. Even if you're a pro, you're stepping on stage, you hopefully win $3,000 and it costs you $3,000 to travel out there to compete. Create a balance of your life at all levels. And if you can create that structural piece, even as an amateur, then as a national level competitor, and then as a pro, you're not only going to be getting better and better in your bodybuilding career, but you're also going to get better and better with building a business, building stronger relationships. People want to be around you. It, it just opens more doors. The reason why I have this channel is to open more doors, to connect with more people, to help people out like you out there. Even if it's around business advice, I'm more than happy to do an entire business series. So if you guys want to comment down below and I'm more than happy to do a business advice series, owning your own business versus working for someone else is huge. Amen. And I can tell you that the first month I left corporate America, I worked more hours than I did, but I also had a very hard time understanding the fact that I controlled my own schedule. It felt like I had finally walked out of prison. There were jail cells around me, walls around me, and I opened that door and I walked out and I was still sitting in jail and I couldn't figure out the way to the front door. And when I figured out the way to the front door, I took a breath, I looked up at the sky and I embraced every aspect of life around me. Balance your life. If you guys have any other questions on relationships, go ahead and comment them below. And we are discussing offering a new course on how to have a healthy relationship in health and fitness. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you comment so we know.